and the wolves quickly spread out from their release point to occupy territory throughout the states of Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho. It'll be fast. And if you can start with just a few dozen wolves and in the course of one decade have a population of 1,500, and you can have a geographic expansion where they've filled up a big chunk of a three-state area, and these are big western states, yeah, when the conditions are right, they can recolonize pretty rapidly. Could we see them in Manhattan or Chicago? As soon as the deer get there, the wolves will be right behind them. Animals haven't just been hunted by humans, they've also been hemmed in. There are over three million miles of paved road in the United States alone. And it's no coincidence that many of them cut right through the paths animals use to get from place to place. The things that make a landscape good for animal movement also make it easy to engineer a road into that location. So we've cut off pretty much all major migrations in North America. Asphalt and automobiles wreak particular havoc on the grizzly bear. Their habitat was so carved up by roads that they were confined to isolated pockets, cutting them off from food sources and potential mates. In a life after humans, Roads are no longer barriers for the grizzly. Instead, they are pathways, trails that lead them back into the heart of their former range. Forty years after people. While cities of steel and concrete are still standing tall, the suburbs are under attack. Roughly 90% of all homes in the United States have wood frames, while some have burned. Others are now being devoured. Without paint and preservatives, the lumber of homes is defenseless against termites. Termites feast on cellulose, the basic building block of wood, and their appetites are relentless. Some colonies can eat as much as 1,000 pounds of wood per year. In this destructive advance, the termites aren't working alone. The process we know as rotting will occur when the wood gets exposed to the elements. And this rotting actually is a more complicated process. It's a process by which microbes attack the wood and release carbon dioxide and methane to the atmosphere. If humans were to leave, it would be a matter of decades before most structures that had significant wood components would start to decay. Faced with the two-pronged attack from termites and rot, the beams that hold up the roof give way and the boundary between inside and out that had once been so important to the humans who called this building home is forever erased. Other substances like this mortar and rock are gonna last longer than several decades, but they'll still crumble uh, through natural chemical and physical weathering processes, and eventually these walls will fall down as well, and there'll be no remnants. Now, nature will act quickly to swallow up these ruins. This crumbling house in Baltimore's Druid Hill Park was once home to the caretaker of the city zoo. It looks like this building has been abandoned for more than 100 years, but in reality, people have been living here up till 40 years ago. It's amazing how quickly the vegetation has reclaimed the area. The vines have started to climb up the walls, the trees are growing into the structure, and they're both physically pulling the structure apart and chemically dissolving it. 
Structures built entirely of stone or masonry will far outlive anything made of wood. Exactly how fast they will crumble depends on their environment. The coast of Maine really isn't very kind to buildings. Structures out here don't so much decay when you leave them alone, they melt. These structures on Black Island, Maine, used to be part of a granite quarry whose stone was used to build and decorate cities like Boston, New York, and Philadelphia. It was abandoned around 1920. Here, the buildings have all vanished within the space of 80 or 90 years. There's almost nothing left. In the right conditions, and with human maintenance, stone construction can last for thousands of years. In some places in Europe, ancient Roman aqueducts are still in use. But without maintenance, stone can fall victim to a very stealthy enemy. One of the great enemies of stone is actually salts and salt crystals. Even thousands of years ago, people noticed the effect that salts had on deteriorating the ancient pyramids. There are many ways salts infiltrate stone buildings and monuments. Polluted air, seawater, and even bird droppings. Soluble salts dissolve in water, and as the water evaporates, it will rise up inside of uh, porous building materials, things like brick and stone and even concrete. And what happens is the salts will continue to grow inside the pores of the stone until they come up against the, the side of the wall, and they'll actually push the stone apart. What we're seeing in this time-lapse video really shows the rapid decay of the stone in response to this deterioration by salts. In this experiment, it took about three weeks to go from this piece of stone to this piece of stone, which is completely deteriorated by sodium sulfate crystallization. Three weeks in this accelerated aging chamber are equivalent to a few years in the harshest of environments, or a few decades in a more benign desert climate. If we could see microscopically what's going on inside the pyramids, this is what would be taking place. You could actually see the salts deteriorate the stone. Although not immune to decay, the pyramids have survived for nearly 5,000 years because of their sheer volume and their hot, dry desert environment. Too massive to be destroyed by either man or nature, the pyramids of Giza were the only one of the seven wonders of the ancient world to survive into the modern era. Many ancient monuments have survived only because of human maintenance throughout the centuries. The Sphinx was uncovered and restored for the first time back in 1400 BC. Modern experts who have studied the Sphinx predict that without human intervention, deterioration from salts and wind erosion could render it a pile of dust within 500 to 1,000 years. The largest concrete structures, like Hoover Dam, will last even longer than that. Hoover is so thick that over 70 years after it was constructed, the concrete deep inside was still curing. But of the 15 tallest dams in the United States, only 10 are concrete. The others are made of compacted rock or earth, like Northern California's Trinity Dam. If there were humans around, this leak in the dam would get an emergency fix. But those days are long gone. Some of these earth dams are absolutely enormous. If they fail, as they will in time, then the surge of water that falls in behind them and cascades down a valley below would have a huge force and big enough to sweep away everything in its path. Fifty years after humans, 
The strain of neglect is beginning to show on even the best designed of man-made structures.